Hello guys and welcome to my new Blender game engine tutorial series. Um, this new tutorial series will be specific for AppBGA uh, or in full name Uharonia Project Blender Game Engine and I'm using version 0 0.2.3. Uh, so this tutorial is about how to set up lighting in Blender Game Engine using HDRI images. This will specifically apply for outdoor lighting and is more optimal for sunny daylight but can be used for any sort of lighting setup if needed. Um, so uh, we'll start off with a basic example of how would people set up lighting if they would do it like people normally do in Blender Game Engine, like the most typical way. So you add a sphere, for example, I'll just make a basic scene here. Uh, so it's a sphere in the plane. And yeah, and then we start adding lighting. Uh, typically you'd start by adding some sky. Uh, I'll make sure that I can see it. So kind of bright and desaturated teal color horizon and probably some blue uh, zenith, something like that. And then you add a hemisphere for your sky. Um, disable its specular and grab a color from around here. That looks about right. You could add another hemisphere from the bottom, but there's no need for this really uh, in our case. It's up to you. And then you add the sun lamp, uh, rotate it a bit. Uh, move it up, make it slightly yellowish, something like that. And then you enable a shadow, make it soft shadow, make it a bit nicer, uh, less soft and probably adjust the bias so that it looks a bit better and make sure it's far enough maybe make it a bit bigger area and this usually works as you can see we have a lighting that doesn't look bad you know it's got some blue shadows some sunlight you you can make it even a bit more yellow maybe make the sun brighter okay that doesn't work in this case but yeah it's not bad let's say let's put it that way um, but there's still lots to improve and today I'm gonna show you a method that's not necessarily simple and you could skip a few steps and do approximations at those points but basically it's going to be a detailed overview of how to set up lighting using a background image and make it look good basically so this tutorial will have three parts. In part one, we'll set up the background, like the actual sky. Uh, then the next part will be about the lighting. So sun, hemisphere, uh, setting up correct colors, brightnesses and shadows. And then the last part will be about tone mapping and getting it to look nice together with uh, HDR and as well as some A adoption so that you can see well both in shadows and in well exposed areas. So uh, let's get right into it. First thing you'll have to do is open your browser and we'll need this add-on which you can find at github.com slash ucupumar. I know I spelled it wrong but whatever and it's HDR to RGBM add-on which basically lets you convert high de definition range images to some low definition images uh, and save them in basic PNG format uh, but this encoding me method is called RGBM so what you want to do is click here and click download zip I've already done it so I won't repeat it, 
but uh, once you have downloaded your zip you'll have it somewhere in downloads so now to install it you just op open uh, user preferences and under this tab add-ons just click on install from file and uh, find it so in my case it's downloads blender uh, add I mean add-ons and you just take the zip and click install add-on from file and then you just search for it and make sure it's enabled once it's enabled you can just click here save user settings and you're good to go um, now we'll get into this add-on later but now we'll get going with the downloads the next thing you want to download is uh, this add-on which basically is a converter from cube maps, I mean from equirectangular maps to cube maps, and it's a very great add -on, uh, I mean, blend file. It's not actually, not actually add in, it's just a blend file. Uh, you could create one yourself, but there's no really point when you can download it. Uh, so you just basically hit this download button and click yes, download now. Again, I won't download it right now because the internet at my dorm is just terrible. Um, anyways, once you have downloaded it, you can just open it up. So I think it, I have it under Blender Tools here. Uh, so once you open it up, you'll see uh, it looks something like this. Uh, so there's a cube here, um, a stadium cube up here. Uh, a node setup here and the render settings on the right. Uh, the first thing that you'll want to do, there is one uh, problem with this cube UE mapping and basically uh, those faces will be inverted. So what you want to do is select all the cube, uh, select indi individual faces here, click Y uh, to split them and then you just type in R 180 and basically you'll flip them around otherwise it just uh, will generate wrong cube map and you do the same for this one so uh, 180 uh, firstly you press dub uh, I mean Y to split it and then you type 180 or 180 and once you rotate them um, you're basically good to go. Now what you want to do is create a new texture. So I'll ca call it just cube map again. It really doesn't matter. Uh, now for the resolution you want uh, hate to be any power of two. For example, I'll make a 2K cube map. And this one is the same number, but multiplied by 1.5. So you can type it in like that. And you get the right resolution. Now, very important part is this, you should enable 32-bit float. So make sure you check that checkbox and then click OK. Now, once this texture is made, uh, I suggest you to go here under the material and make sure to select that specific texture, whatever you called it here. In my case, it renamed to QMA.001, so I just select it here. And this is like uh, now fully ready for you to bake QMAPs quickly. So I would suggest you to hit Ctrl S and save it. So uh, now you can easily generate QMAPs. Just open this file. Then you select Equirectangular Texture here and you can click Bake and it's already. So that's why I suggest you to save it. Now, the last download that you need is an equirectangular HDR image by itself. And the great site to find them is hdrihaven.com. Uh, now, this is a site where you can find free Creative Commons Zero HDRIs. And it's really awesome. Uh, if you enjoy this site as much as I do, uh, Make sure that you check out its Patreon, click here for more information. And if you can afford it and if you really like those HRIs, feel free to support the author because he's a really awesome person for making this great website. Anyways, to get started, you just click here, HRIs, and once you click it, you'll be cre 
greeted by all those sections of AGIs. Now for our lighting setup, what we want to avoid is AGIs like this, where there's objects like buildings visible, uh, or maybe your inside interior that w won't quite fit well for us. Uh, also large trees like you can see here, that's not an option. Uh, the best one to select here is sky section. It will give the cleanest images and the ones that are best suited for us. Now for this tutorial in specific, I'll be using uh, this Kiara 8 Sunset, which I have already downloaded. So if you click on one of them, uh, you will see uh, here an option of multiple downloads and you can choose whichever you want. I took the 4K because on my slow internet, this one would take very long time. Uh, I could have downloaded the 8K, but I didn't see any need for that. Uh, you can even go for this one and make like 8K cube map for that. But uh, that's a bit too crazy for me. I, I just don't see much point in it. So take whichever you want to uh, and download it. You can of course choose any other of them. Uh, but if you want to follow along, just stick to this one. Um, now what I suggest you to not take for this case scenario is night images because they don't have sun so they would have different setup, probably even simpler one, but yeah. You can later experiment with it yourself and try to make night scenes. And the same applies for overcast, like this one. Also this one. For overcast cases, I would suggest you to basically do similar things as you would do it during night. Basically, hemisphere is the main light source, and then you add a very soft shadowed basic sunlight from the approximate direction from where the most lights come and make it very subtle and dark and that's how it would work uh, anyways once you have downloaded this you can close browser we won't need it anymore as far as i'm concerned so now here in the cube mapper blend file what we want to do is uh, open uh, the texture that you have downloaded I have stored it in an HDRI folder. Uh, no, I don't. I actually have it somewhere else. I have it in downloads, yes. So uh, you just select that image, click open. Uh, it'll be here. Uh, you'll see the name of the image here. And now what you want to do is just go over here and click bake. Now you'll ha have to wait for a moment. Um, but usually it's relatively quick and okay if you see them upside down like this it means i took a certain mistake so they should be all facing upwards so i'm going to rotate all of those uvs um, by 180 so again you just select the face click y and then r and 180 uh, and do it for all of the wrong ones. Now those ones, just don't touch them ever. They're always correct from as far as I can tell you. So now if you hit back again, um, we should see the QMAP all good to go. Now what you want to make sure is that there are values over there at the bottom here that go higher uh, then one if you hover over at around sun so basically you would want to see something like uh, from tens to even thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands sometimes that depends on how bright the light source is here you can see like uh, two, 212,000 so if when you hold down the left mouse button you see those numbers then it's good if you if it's always kept out at maximum one value for any of the R, G or B values, well then probably you didn't click on the 30 bit uh, 32 bit float checkbox. So you have to create a new texture here and make sure that you click on that one. Now once you have this image, I would suggest you to uh, save this one as an 
uh, HDRI QMAP. So I'll call it uh, Kiara uh, 2K um, and I'll make sure that the format is um, Radiance HDR. So I'll click save as image. We'll just use it later. Um, now you want to hit here and code HDR to RGBM next. That's why we needed that HDR to RGBM add-on. This will convert this image from their image to LDR image. Uh, now it will take a bit of time depending on the size of the image, but usually it's relatively quick and you get um, actually kind of weird looking image because it will be mostly transparent. Um, okay, it's taking quite a bit of time this time. Okay, it's done. So what you get is something like this. Um, most of the image is transparent, but they're around horizon usually. The sky is a bit brighter, so there's higher alpha. And when there, the, where there's sun, you can see very full alpha. So alpha is one around this area. And if you get image like that, then great. We are ready to move forward. So you want to save this image uh, somewhere as .png. And now what you want to do is head back to your scene wherever you had it. And let's start off by creating, let's say, UV sphere. Uh, okay, before I do that, um, so basically I'll explain how this setup will be different for sky. Usually you just enable the colors here or you click on real sky here and then you just add sky texture here for the world tab at textures. Um, usually this would work, but there is one problem. You don't have full material control over here. You can't use nodes there. Uh, and we want to use nodes in this case. So what you want to do is add a UV sphere. Uh, you can feel free to lower the uh, detail here, 16 and 12, 16 segments, 12 rings. That's totally enough. Make it smooth. And then in edit mode, scale it up to something like 256. And then press S minus one. This will invert the image inside out. Now what you want to do is uh, you want to have node editor open so that you can edit the materials easy. We'll add a new material here and call it sky. Um, so it doesn't matter what you fill in here, this part will not be used. Uh, what you want to do is add a new texture and we'll call it sky as well because I want to. Now the type we need to select environment map because that will enable us to use QMAPs. Now this one will be image file. So you select image file and click open. Now locate your uh, RGBM texture and open it. Once this is ready, you can just disable this texture for this material, even though it won't, won't matter. Now you enable use of nodes for this material here. And you can delete this material from here. We won't need it. However, what we do need is to add a texture node and select our sky texture. Uh, also, we need a geometry node. This will enable us to map the coordinates of this texture. And for background, it's actually very simple. You just grab local coordinates and plug them in. Now, once you plug the color into the output, you'll see the background. Yeah, it looks kind of like that background, but it's very weird. You can see those ugly bands all over the place and it doesn't look right. Oversaturated and barely any darkness anywhere. Yeah, that's weird. So how do we fix this? We just uh, go under the nodes, uh, add a node group, and then there you find this decode RGBM. Now this comes with the add-on and it's basically converting a PNG image to an HDR color data 
uh, and it takes in the image color as well as this value which is basically alpha channel and now voila you can see this great looking image um, now there is one thing that you want to make sure you check so uh, typically when you would multiply image you know it darkens so 0.5 makes it twice darker and you could go like 0.1 and that will make it 10 times darker and in this case no pixel should be brighter than 0.1 uh, basically in the scene however if we look at sun we can clearly see that it's like nearly white here which means that it's actually high dynamic range however if we go down like uh, for example if we make it thousand times darker the sun is nearly gone however if you remember correctly we saw the sun being very bright on that uh, image file itself you could see values like 200,000 and why they're not here why does it get so dark well because RGBM encodes the brightnesses up to 8 it's not a perfect solution it works in our case however uh, but we all need to add a little tweak basically all, all the rest of the scene is below the 8 brightness there's the, just the sun and we can do a little trick to make it brighter um, but before the, that we have to figure out its average color which we will also use in the next part for setting up sun lamps so uh, what I would suggest you do for now is just save this plant file and go into composing uh, tab now uh, make sure you have set it to something the set the resolution to something low I'll use uh, 768 by 512 this will work most likely now you want to add camera and just hit um, switch to planar render for example and hit render here you have the render result so you know, now you just press use node and auto render delete this image add uh, input texture uh, plug it in here yeah I know this looks a bit tedious but uh, we do want to do this right now um, now what was the best way to do this I don't remember right now I thought it had to map nicely oh I know uh, I'll select the other image what you want to have is make sure this image is set to image or movie all right now it's working fine and what you don't want it to do is use alpha oh no you want you want it to do wait a sec oh yes yeah, sorry you have to open the HDMI image I make, made a little mistake here um, and if you have that HDMI image for this texture then uh, you'll see uh, the proper image now you want to find where the like core the center of Sun is and it will be easier if you make the image uh, darker by a set value so I'll just multiply it by maybe um, let's just take value it will make it easier and I'll multiply it by 0.01 so it's 100 times darker and you can see that it's still like 3000 here and so it's extremely bright and now what you want to do is uh, figure out like the average color of the sun core uh, I'll add three mix nodes each of them will have a mix factor of 0.5 and you want them to slowly converge into one uh, I know this does sound a bit like a hacky way to figure out sun average color uh, you could find an easier way but I like this because it gives a bit more accurate results for me and uh, well yeah that's basically the only reason uh, so now you want to start from outside and slowly move inward and the outer ring will probably be uh, 
around here where it starts to fade into the sky. Here there's all already sky and it's just the atmospheric scattering. Well, technically it's the same for here, but you can already see some very bright pixels. So I would suggest starting from around here and just slowly move like inwards. Um, what you'll most likely see happen is um, those colors will slowly get brighter as you move on. But you won't be able to see it like here it looks white and here it also looks white but they're different colors. They're quite different to be honest with you. I just want to make sure I help pick this one into the account. So it's like here. Now it's a bit higher. You want to make sure that one of them is like the brightest possible pixel. Uh, it's not picking up the, right, up the right thing. Okay, now it should be, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you'll probably get two dark values. So you want to have picked a color of every and then it will average out for this wall big spot. And once you have it average out, actually you don't need this one, you just plug it in here and you can see those values here. Uh, but I'll tell you they're not yet right because we multiplied it by 0 0.01 here. So we want to plug it in multiply here and do something like this one over that number. You get 100 and now you see that or not. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, you have to plug that into there. And now you see the real values. Now we don't need very accurate numbers. So this will be about right. Um, let's just take another, uh, I'll just take an RGB node and pick this color up like that. Now you have this node selected and press Ctrl C to copy it. Now let's get back to the default view and paste it. In. Oh, it's because I was in. S uh, I don't know why it doesn't like it. Oh, because this one is with alpha, it's from here. So you hover this color and just copy the color itself. That should work. Now you add in an RGB thing here and paste the color in, and you should see that crazy color here. Now uh, we want some sort of way to detect if it's sun or not. Uh, I'll just multiply it back. Uh, so you want to see if this uh, spot is as bright as sun or if it's not. And an easy way to do that is basically use math node, take the color, and make a check greater than. And you just want to select a value that's like near 8. I would say 7.5. You can just plug it in color check. You can see it approximately gives you the sun area. As you make it bigger, it will reduce it, but don't make it above 8. And yeah, it will give you those sharp transitions, but uh, they'll be adjusted a bit. Uh, in a moment. So once you have done that step, um, you want to make a color mix node. Um, you tell no, we want to make a multiply node. And you plug this in to first color and this, this one as factor. Now if we plug this color in here by itself, um, right now we just darkened it. Uh, if you would plug this in here, well, that looks a bit weird and it's way too bright. You'll quickly notice it. We'll just make it something like uh, one hour, one million. And it's still bright, which is wrong because we never had red channel at million, for example. The highest values were 200,000. And why is it like that? It's because this color uh, doesn't take into account the fact that uh, 
this already makes it a times brighter than one. So multiplying by this makes uh, gives you like a times brighter color. So basically what you want to do is just divide all of those numbers by eight. Uh, I think I didn't do it for this one. Yeah. And now you don't need this multiply thing anymore. If you just plug it straight in, uh, well, you can test it for brighter values as you scroll it up. As you can see, it still looks weird when a bit dark, but you won't be able to see it in scene because the sun will look quite bright to you most of the time. So now as you plug this in here, basically we have an HD ready uh, sun in our scene. Um, and that's all we need needed to do. So now I'll remove this camera and I'll make sure to save this file. So in the next tutorial, we'll add um, objects in the scene and lighting. So we'll add sun, hemisphere, and uh, we'll also add reflections on the object. And the main reason why we did all this uh, making sun super brighting are reflections. And you'll see why in the next tutorial. So stay tuned and see you next time.